So I'm watching Unicorn Store, which is Brie Larson's like director debut, and she's also in it. But this one, look at you, Miss Bindi. You look like a little chicken. Look at those chicken legs. Look at them. You lost your fur, and now you're like a completely different looking dog. Like, who are you? Who's your stylist? Personally, Bindi, I think you're a lot cuter when you're fluffy. But you know, you gotta be groomed and summer's coming up and you get really hot really easily. Yeah, those are my pants that you uh, wiped your face on after eating SpaghettiOs, huh? But did you want your pepperoni? It's over here. She literally looks in the direction of the pepperoni because she knows, because she's obsessed with it. It's her crack. Is it your crack cocaine? Okay, she said get the camera out of my face. Oh, oh it's the puppy crack. You're really, you're really just begging. You're not even gonna do any tricks? Come on, this is a big, this is a big buddy. You gotta do little tricks. You gotta work for it. You go up, you twirl. Oh, so good. And you give high five. And we shake, shake, shake. Go down. You roll over. Oh, you roll over so good. There you go. There you go. It's big, but he eats it so fast because she just... I mean, look at that. Do you even chew it or do you just swallow it? You know, you can savor your meal, Bindi. No one's rushing you. No one's rushing you but yourself. What was that? 30 seconds? Not even? And now you're looking in the ground? You're literally, you're insane. You're a drug addict. Do you understand this? You're on crack. Miss Bindi? Miss Bindi? Are we at the park? Yes. Your favorite park and you're crying for no reason. You're crying because you want to sit on the table. You're so needy, do you know that? Hi friends, so today is a very exciting day for me because I am going to see Broods tonight. If you don't know who Broods are, one, you might have seen this little poster on my wall when I do videos sometimes. That's them. Broods are a New Zealand brother and sister band. Their most known song is Bridges, I think, still. I've been a fan of them for many years. I think I first found them in 2014 before their first album even came out. They only had their EP. This I think is going to be my eighth show of theirs. I've never missed one when they've been in either the Milwaukee or Chicago area. Tonight's show is in Chicago at the Metro. I've seen them at this venue before. I'm so excited because obviously they released their new album in February, I believe. Yeah, so I'm excited to hear all the new songs live. It's gonna be a great time. But I do have a reading update. That's the point for Drake out the camera right now. I started again but better last night. I have an e-arc. This is by Christine Riccio who I'm sure you all know as Pulling Bananas Books on YouTube, booktube. I don't read contemporary young adult all that much but I thought this one might be interesting. One because it is a booktuber book and it's the first one that I've had like light interest in so I was like you know why not and it does follow a college student so it's kind of like new adult I guess you could say. I don't know. The classification system is it's just so confusing to me. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, the book is about a girl named Shane who is trying to have a second shot at doing college right because so far she hasn't made any friends, she hasn't done anything, and so she decides to do a study abroad program in England, and she sees this as her second chance to have a better college experience. I'm about 20% of the way in so far. I'm not loving it, if I'm being honest. There are certain particular spots that I'll really enjoy. Some of the anxieties that I've seen Shane have so far I felt like they're very realistic and things that I could relate to but the writing to me is just very juvenile feeling the way that the character is acting to me doesn't really read like a 20 year old it reads more like a 16 year old obviously I can't speak for all 20 year olds I mean I'm 24 right now so I've had my 20s and I've also been that person who hasn't experienced a lot who isn't outgoing or whatever so I know I guess what it's like to be put in situations that you might not be comfortable with or just not being that person who goes out and gets all the experiences. But even then I wouldn't act or speak speak the way that this character speaks. It just, it's just kind of weird for me and it kind of puts me out of the story. I'll read a line and I'm like, eh. I don't know. We'll see how it goes along. It's kind of insty love you so far too. I'll wait until I finish the book obviously to have my full formed opinion. Also, it's very much Christine's book. You can really feel her in the story if that makes sense. I don't really want to say that as a critique because she is in a unique position where she has portrayed so much of her life on camera for her viewers to see and get to know her as a person but with other authors you don't have that so you don't know the little quirks that are
are very much them that they put into their novel. But with Christine, we know these things. Like in the book, Shane has a blog called French Watermelons 19 or something like that. And obviously Christine is pulling bananas books 20, I think, something like that. So obviously we're gonna make that connection. But if a normal author had a blog like Christine had and then put that little tidbit into their novel, we probably wouldn't realize it was them putting something in from their life, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna try not to judge how much of it is self-insert because writing what you know is what they tell you to do, I think, especially when you're a debut author. But yeah, those are my thoughts so far. I'm gonna go get ready for this concert. I'm so excited. Oh, it's obvious. I'm a circle for you. got back from the concert that I went to and I just needed to update to say it was amazing. It was front row barricade which thank god because I waited like two and a half hours which isn't that long of a time to wait in line for something but it was like in the 30s I would say. Snapchat tried to say it was 40 but there's no goddamn way. My toes were literally numb like I don't even know how I walked into the building because my feet were just like completely frozen. Well, that was so much fun especially since yesterday was in the 60s but today they said oh Bonnie's going outside let's just let's just free it for her. Like I know I always get hot and I guess I appreciate it a little but like you could have kept it at 50. My friend literally looked at me and he's like you're completely pale which meant I was fucking cold. But Bruce is one of my favorite bands so it was worth it. This was my eighth time seeing them in concert and I finally got a freaking set list. Woo! God smiled on me today because he said the weather's cold so I'll give you this set list. Also this is my first time wearing space buns and I highly recommend for concerts because because my hair did not freaking move. And last update before I go watch TV or something and then go to bed because it's 1 a.m. I'm starving because I haven't eaten since breakfast and I came home to see that my family left me a whole half loaf of garlic bread. Ah!
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm done. So some of you may or may not know that I am a Halo Top ice cream enthusiast. I first started eating it when I first tried to be healthy, like, in 2017, I had this big health grind. Anyway, I've still been eating it ever since because I really do love it. I mean, I know normal ice cream is better, but I do really enjoy this, so I might as well eat it for lower calories, be a little healthier or something, I don't know. Ever since they announced that they were coming out with a strawberry cheesecake flavor, I have been on the hunt for it. I looked at my local grocery store, no. I looked at Walmart, no. Finally, I go online. I look up the thing because they have something on their website where you can like search where specific flavors are located nearest you. At the top of the list was Target. So I said, okay, that was probably where I was gonna check next anyway. Let's go. I walk into Target, they don't have it. They have gingerbread, which I love her. No offense to her, but she was a seasonal flavor. Why do you still have gingerbread? So then, with my hopes low, not wanting to get too invested, I go to the only other place in my city that it says has this flavor. It's a Meyer. I don't know if these are everywhere. This one opened here when Meyer started branching out in Wisconsin like three years ago, something like that. And I've still never been there. So this was my first trip headed on in. And I was like, Meyer, this is your moment to earn me as a customer. Don't mess it up. And what do you know? I know it's absolutely ridiculous to get this excited over an ice cream flavor, especially one you could just get in a normal freaking ice cream, but they also had the blueberry crumble flavor that I've been looking for forever and it just hasn't come up at my local grocery store or anything. But I thought because this has been so hyped up for myself, I would give it a try on camera. Let you know, you know, if you're also a Halo Top lover, or if you're just looking for some lower calorie ice cream, you know, let you know how the taste. It's been out for a couple minutes because that's what you're supposed to do with Halo Top. It probably would be best even longer, but I'm impatient. She smells like strawberry. This is what we're looking like. Why am I a booktuber when I could be like a food connoisseur? That'd be so much funner. No offense, books. Okay, please be everything I'm hoping for and more. Not bad, not like amazing. I don't think I got like a bite of like cheesecake or anything though, so let's try again. There's a there's a squirrel of something in here. Oh, that bite was some good shit. I think she's a hit, but I'm gonna eat the whole thing and then I'll give you an updated, you know, reaction, review, whatever. Literally no one cares. Why am I doing this? I'm still gonna do it. Update, it was very good. I definitely hyped it for myself a little too much because I was just so excited to try it. But still, solid Halo Top flavor. Definitely will be having it again. We making blueberry waffles today, baby. Hell yeah, baby. If this bitch says baby one more time. Gonna eat these bad boys while I watch my woman's latest video. Hell yeah. What? And I cannot stress this enough. The fuck? What is going on here? It's April. Happy Game of Thrones day, I guess. What truly makes it really bad is that it was 70 degrees on Monday. So I don't really have any plans today other than to read. Because truly, what else can you do when it could get up to seven inches of snow tonight? I am still making my way through again, but better. I'm like 44% of the way in now and I have to say it is not getting better. The chapter that I read last night that I left off on, I don't think I've ever cringed so much. There was so much secondhand embarrassment in that scene, both for the characters, for myself. It was, there was just a very dramatic scene that I would like to think would never happen in real life. And like all of this like crazy shit, like things that I just don't feel like would happen. And when I finished that scene, I was like, wow, that was a lot. And then I saw that I'm still only 44% of the way in. So like, what the hell else is gonna happen. You're probably watching this right now and being like, Bonnie, you clearly are not enjoying it, so why are you still reading it? Why don't you just DNF? And my reason for not doing nothing is because I don't think it's that bad to the point where I need to DNF it, like it's ruining my reading or anything. Normally I DNF books when I just like have no interest in reading them. And like, I don't think this is gonna get a one star. I'd say right now it's at a two. Potentially it could get to a three. Do I see it going higher than that right now? No, but like I said, I still have more than halfway to go. So maybe it'll really turn around. So hopefully you can hear me okay because I do have my fan on right here because I have a reading update but I think I'm going to talk about it tomorrow because I'm just having a really bad night with my condition. And I feel like I just wanted to come on here and talk about it a little bit. The name I always give it is Neurogenic Rosacea because that's the name that I remember the most. When I went to the Mayo Clinic they gave me that and one other one it was like and. 
frog. I don't even remember it. That's why I, I, I don't say it. But there is two. Mostly because I don't think they've really figured anything out about this disease, illness, condition. I don't know what I don't know what to call it. I'm just having like a really really shitty night. As you can see, I look like I have been in the sun for hours, but I haven't. And honestly, if it was just dealing with looking like Tony the Tomato, I'd be fine. I think that's what a lot of people, especially doctors that I first go to, they think it's just a cosmetic thing, but it's not. It's that I literally feel like I'm burning on fire. And it sucks. I mean, I do everything that I can. I have fans, I have ice packs, but sometimes no matter how hard I try, it will still just suck. I've been going through this since October 2015, so in October, if I don't have something to help, it'll be four years. Wow. And it's just really frustrating to be in the kind of pain that you can't really describe. Like, I don't know how to describe being so hot, and sometimes it feels like, am I crazy? Am I really that bad off? And like, I know that I am, but I just, I don't know. Sometimes it's just hard to feel validation, I guess, when no one knows what the heck I mean. When I say neurogenic rosacea and I hate even that rosacea is attached to the word because I just feel like people associate rosacea with redness but that's just not the only thing I'm dealing with. That's the least of my worries. I've just kind of had an emo night tonight which probably contributed to the way that I am because I know it's something that is very affected by emotions. And it's frustrating because I've tried every medication that I was originally recommended last year when I went to the Mayo Clinic and actually got a diagnosis and I was, I was really hoping something would work. This isn't me filming a clip to be like, oh pity me or asking for sympathy. I just want to be real with everyone about my chronic illness, pain. I really don't know what to call it and I hate that because it is pain but it's just such a different type of pain that I don't know, I almost feel like I'm hijacking the word but is that stupid? I know when I've talked about, you know, feeling trapped and stuck from what I'm going through, I've gotten comments from people saying, thank you for talking about this because I'm in a similar situation, you know, obviously not what I have, but maybe they have chronic pain or illness or disability. I don't know, I guess it's good to talk about it because I know it feels good to hear that you're, you're not alone. Like you don't want other people to be suffering with something in the way that you are, but knowing that there is other people, it's nice. Ugh, why am I crying? I'm so goddamn emo tonight. But yeah, I don't really know where this clip was going or why I really filmed. But tonight I've really been like researching remote jobs because it's really hard not having an income. My family is is so good and supportive and I'm so lucky, but we're already a, like a lower income family and I know if I was like contributing, things could be a lot better and it feels shitty not being able to so i i know there are remote positions out there so i'm just trying to find something that works for me that's not like customer service or some bullshit like that because i honestly don't think being on the phone would be good for me i'm not trying to like make an excuse but even now when i call people like i call them on speakerphone and i have to position my phone so that the fan's not making a lot of noise and blocking the call again i don't know where this clip is going how long have i been talking six minutes i should probably shut up but yeah i guess this is just me saying if you're struggling from any kind of pain and you're stuck just know you're not alone I'm in that boat too, so. Okay, I'm done. I'll give my final update for again, but better tomorrow, like I said, when I'm feeling better. Alrighty, friends, now that it is daytime, I'm not completely burning, let's talk about again, but better. <clears throat> also, sorry if I like sound weird. I'm sick and I hate it. I think the last time I talked about this book, I was at the like 44% mark. And then a couple days ago, I just sat down and I finished the rest of it. So I will say that the second half to me was a lot better than the first half. It took me days to get through the first half, but one day to get through the second. Something that I didn't realize this book was going to have the time jump. So we do see this character at both 20 and 26. I do think the character reads more maturely once we go to the time jump, but I still think the book is a whole was very just juvenilely written. I actually think this could have been a really great adult book because again character at 20, character at 26. I know this book was trying to be quirky and I think there's a fine line when it comes to being quirky. You can either do it really well and have the writing come across as 
funny or you can do it in a way that just kind of comes off cringy and for me this came off more cringy than funny I don't know if I talked about this yet but I did really like the anxiety representation that was probably my favorite part of the book because it just felt really really accurate and some of the anxieties that Shane was having were anxieties that I would have myself in that kind of situation and it was just really nice to have that kind of representation out there something else I wanted to touch on that I know I touched on in a previous clip was not judging this as hardly for the sort of self insert parts of it because Christine is in a different position than most authors are however I do think it became a little much because unless you don't know her going in I would say it's impossible not to picture the main character as Shane there just gets to be so many little parts of her in this book and I think as much as we as the readers need to respect that we know this author more than the average there's also a bit of a responsibility to to say I know I have an audience and I shouldn't tailor this character to be exactly like me because then it does read more semi-autographical and if it was pitched that way I think it would have been absolutely fine but it wasn't something else that I did not appreciate was the kind of emotional cheating that was going on now I know a lot of people see that there's cheating in a book of any kind and they immediately go problematic bad we don't want that but I actually think it's okay to have cheating in books simply because it is a very realistic thing as much as we would like to believe that it doesn't happen obviously we all know that it does and it's a very human thing however if it's going to be something that comes up I think it should always be addressed appropriately and I don't believe this book entirely did that I do feel that the main love interest was very I guess apologetic and self-aware but I don't think the treatment of the other girl was done well I think she was kind of painted as this girl we aren't supposed to like simply because she's dating the main characters want to be love interest I didn't like that part of it I would have liked maybe even in an open conversation or something just showing that it's not her fault you know let me open my notes to see if there's anything else I need to talk about part of the writing that I also didn't love was that it could be very telling rather than showing at times for example the main character has these journal entries of her experiences going to different countries and they were very much we did this and then we did this but for the reader I feel like when you're going to different countries and you're having these explorations that some people reading it might not know about might not have experienced themselves it's important to be very detailed creating an atmosphere describing different things I mean this is just book writing 101 as well but I think it's especially important in the study abroad aspect and we know that Christine has actually studied abroad so I just thought it would be more enriching on the details but it wasn't most of the time and the same thing went for like the characters it was very surface level kind of explanations for most of things I just wish we would have been brought more into the novel and had that experience of being abroad with the character but didn't really happen there are also parts with her family that I felt were just super cringy and over dramatic and just did not seem very realistic it just felt you know lifetime movie dramatic which like I said though the second half did really pick up I think the writing was a much better than there is a fantastical element to this book as well which I had heard somewhat about going into it but I didn't realize to what extent it would go and it just felt kind of out of place in an overall contemporary novel I think if that had been the focus in the beginning and it was something that was mentioned in the description of the book it would have been more enjoyable and not feel quite so out of the blue I didn't hate it but I didn't love it oh Overall, I think there were parts of this that were very good, but for the most part, I did not enjoy it. The writing was just not my style. I think as a debut, there's definitely a chance that I would pick up one of her books in the future, assuming that it's something that I'm interested in and hearing from people that the writing has improved because I definitely think there is potential here. It just really wasn't for me and it might be for some people. Like I said, what I find cringy, someone else might find funny and endearing. I just personally cannot read the words what the fudge without having every part of my body cringe if it was like a 16 year old or something although even then I 
what 16 year olds said that unless they're in front of their parents. But yeah, I think I've talked about it pretty thoroughly now. I gave it two and a half stars. Hopefully those of you who are interested in it enjoy it more than I did. I think I'm going to actually end off this vlog here. I know I've only talked about one book, but I talked about it very in depth because it is an arc and it is an arc that I know so many people have been anticipating and are interested in hearing about. And also I've already edited like a portion of this vlog and it was already like over 10 minutes. So with the footage I currently have, I think it's gonna be good. I am going to be reading another very exciting arc in my next vlog. I was hoping to have it to show it up because it was supposed to come in the mail today. But then I checked the mailbox and it wasn't there. But Whitney is sending me her copy of Red, White, and Royal Blue to borrow. And I'm so excited because everyone has been talking about it so much. It's been getting rave reviews. Whitney gave it a rave review and I absolutely trust her opinion. So that will be in my next vlog. I also want to get this vlog up this week because I don't think I'm going to be filming like a sit down -y video. Normally I try to do a vlog one week, sit down -y video the next week, then a vlog. You get what I'm saying here. But I am sick and I just don't want to film a sit down video. I just like do not feel good at all and just talking. For the amount that I've been talking, which is quite a bit, but it's just too much. I don't want to talk again ever. So yeah, that's my reasoning. You probably don't care. Sorry there was only one book featured in this video. I hope that's okay though. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.